first time I ever saw David was when I found his body. first lift went out and uh, that left just our squad there with some new guys coming in and uh, when the second lift came in uh, he came in at a different approach and it looked like the wind blew him off the mountain and he started to go down and with the extra weight uh, he was unable to stabilize the helicopter and uh, wound up hitting some boulders and uh, having a massive explosion just spilling these guys out all over the mountain. And when the helicopter we saw coming in, we're getting ready, you know, it's coming down, it's at the top of a very high mountain, and uh, we're running towards it, and you could see the helicopter coming down and the guys getting ready to jump out. All of a sudden, it hit a current of air, and it went back up. I felt the prop wash go away, and I thought the guy was taking off without us, and we were supposed to go back. Uh, but when I looked up and saw what was happening, uh, it was just like watching, t it was like watching it, something on TV. It was uh, just surreal to watch uh, mm -hmm. this helicopter, you know, go down that mountain with those people. And as it went back up, it started coming back down. But as it's coming back down, it tilted with the black back blade going. You could see the guys, I mean, we're just ready. And they're like, what the hell's happening? And that back blade hit the side of the mountain. It rolled down a little bit, hit some boulders and just blew up and just started tumbling all the way down. And it, as it tumbled, um, the guys had claymore mines, grenades, uh, rocket launchers, ammun you know, all kinds of rounds. And that's ex blowing up as it's going down all the way to the bottom. And bodies were being strewn all the way down with the two pilots on top of the engine just on fire, you know, smoldering and the... Uh... Pilots uh, were, were burnt beyond recognition. They were still strapped in their chairs. And I'll never forget the horror in their, in their eyes when they knew something was wrong. It was starting to turn and start to crash. I know I felt, holy shit, helpless. And um, I remember running down. And the first body I came upon, it was just like, holy shit, he was folded in half. I think Joe was, was there with me. I'm not, I can't remember. He told me to radio in for help, and I knew I botched that up. I got yelled at because I called up. I wasn't trained in radio, and just send some fucking help here, and I don't know, there's nine of us dead, and they said, you're not allowed to say that, and I said, bullshit, just get, you know, I, I just lost it. Uh, I think uh, the helicopter crash was somewhere, I think, around 10, 11 o'clock, but they didn't really get uh, a, a message back until about 1.30. And and then the hillside caught fire, everything's blowing up. You know, this is going on from maybe morning, like 10 o'clock in the morning, all the way to, I think we got back at base camp at, at four or five in the afternoon. So this is a lot of hours trying to find bodies and survivors. And First time I ever saw David was when I found his body. Uh, it had been on fire, but uh, not too bad. He, he wasn't... Um, traumatized as much as the other people. And uh, I was able to get his wallet out, if you remember. We took his wallet out and uh, to find out who he was and uh, laid it on top of him and uh, then prepared uh, his body uh, for extraction. Once the bodies were all up to the top, when the Chinook there was bringing them all up and there was a pile of them there, and then it was my job to load them up there and I remember loading the bodies, and half of them, you know, their arms are sticking out of the, 
and the body bags weren't zipped or whatever and stacking them on there. And I remember looking at the, the door gunner and I thought the job was completed. We could get the hell out of there. And then that last scene of, of David's body, just, God, that's it, it's complete. The last image I saw, I thought it was all over with. And looking down that mountain, in that helicopter, like you said, with that cable, and he went up, and I thought it was all over. I thought we could just go. And as he took off, and I could just see it, just going further down that valley, and it dropped. And it was just like, shit, you know, it's not over. Leaving David there, it was definitely wrong, a wrong thing to do. I don't know why the Army never went back and uh, retrieved his body when they were so close to it. Uh, I can only tell you that uh, after 35 years, uh, I spoke to his mother. And you only have to look her in the face to see how really horrible this is uh, when you speak to her about her son. Mm. But somehow, in the back of my mind, I always thought that someone would go back and find him. Yeah. And uh, it just turned out that that wasn't true. Uh, I don't know why they didn't send us send back, us since there. we knew exactly where he would drop. Uh, we knew the hill very well, why, why they would send a completely different group who had yeah. not witnessed anything to go back to that hill and make a search and then come up empty-handed. David Lovgren's a body that we did not come home. Right. And if we can bring David Lovgren's body home or part of it, or closure to his parents by just knowing that an effort was made by a lot of different people to do mm -hmm. this, I think it will benefit everyone in the, well, every one of us. This mm -hmm. is an open sore that's never healed because there's someone that isn't back. You know, I think it would be, for me myself, I know you guys feel the same way, it would really put a closure to this, to go back you know, I know when they sent us these maps and they wanted to know where we thought the body went down, um, I always felt that we, we were the ones that should have gone on this. Back then, 35 years ago and a few years ago, it should have been us that went there. You know, the Marines always have a big saying, uh, no, one, no man left behind. Right. And when someone's left behind, whether they were in your platoon or close to you, the very fact that you knew them and they were there and they were left behind brings everyone, whether you were involved in the, in the, in the rescue, whether you were, you know, just being in the unit and knowing that someone was left behind exactly. gives an importance to this to everybody in the unit.